Hi, let's talk about oxytroph and discovery of metabolic pathway. The classical method of discovery of metabolic pathway involves the use of X-rays and UV rays. When a culture having wild type cells is exposed to X-rays or UV rays, the cell gets mutated. The process of UV mutagenesis is a random process, hence any gene can be mutated. Now before moving further, let's understand the concept of minimal media and oxytroph. So what is minimal media? The minimal media is a media that contains glucose as a source of carbon along with salts of nitrogen and phosphate. It also contains trace amount of nutrients and minerals. The wild type culture easily grows on minimal media. This is because the wild type cells have all the functional enzymes that are required for the synthesis of metabolites required for its growth. Now, because of UV radiation, if a gene coding for an enzyme involved in a metabolic pathway gets mutated, then the metabolite is not synthesized. As a result, the culture fails to grow. For example, consider a metabolic pathway where metabolite A gets converted into metabolite D. The metabolite B and C are intermediates in the pathway. Now if the gene coding for enzyme E2 gets mutated, then the final metabolite D is not produced. As metabolite D is not produced, the cell fails to grow. Now for the growth of this culture, metabolite D must be supplied in the growth medium, which is our minimal medium. Hence we say the culture is oxytroph for metabolite D. Hence oxytroph means a culture that requires supplementation of particular metabolite in its growth medium for its growth. Remember your growth medium means a minimal medium and the culture is oxytroph for metabolite D. Now let's see how we can use oxytroph to find a particular metabolic pathway. Let's say you have collected several mutants which are oxytroph for metabolite D. Let's call them oxytroph 1, oxytroph 2 and oxytroph 3. Let's say oxytroph 1 has mutation in enzyme E1. Oxytroph 2 has mutation in enzyme E2 and oxytroph 3 has mutation in enzyme E3. All of them fails to produce metabolite D. Hence all are oxytroph for metabolite D. In other words, metabolite D must be supplied in the growth medium for the growth of all these oxytroph. Now pay attention to oxytroph 1. Your E2 and E3 are still functional. If this oxytroph gets the metabolite B, then it can easily make metabolite D. In case of oxytroph 2, the enzyme E3 is still functional. So if this oxytroph gets metabolite C, 
then D can be produced and it will easily grow. And in case of oxidrop 3, it has to be supplied with the final metabolite D for its growth. Now let's go back to oxidrop 1. In case of oxidrop 1, since enzyme E1 is mutated, the enzyme E1 is not functional. As a result, metabolite A will be accumulated in the cell. In case of oxytroph 2, the enzyme E2 is not functional. As a result, metabolite B will be accumulated in the cell. And in case of oxytroph 3, the metabolite C will be accumulated in the cell. All these metabolites that are accumulated are thrown out or secreted from the cell. So, the oxytroph 1 will throw out metabolite A. The oxytroph 2 will secrete out metabolite B. And the oxytroph 3 will secrete out metabolite C. Now let's prepare a plate of minimal media supplied with metabolite D. However, we will use a small trick here. The concentration of metabolite D will be kept one-tenth the original concentration. So the oxytrophs will grow, but their growth will be minimum. Now let's streak oxytroph 1, oxytroph 2 and oxytroph 3 side by side. Since concentration of metabolite D added to the media is less, the growth of oxytroph will also be less. However, something interesting happens where the oxytrophs are near to one another. The oxytroph 2 is producing excess amount of metabolite B. This metabolite B can be utilized by oxytroph 1 for its growth. As a result, the streak of oxytroph 1, which is close to oxytroph 2, will show excess growth. The oxytroph 3 makes excess amount of metabolite C. This metabolite C can be utilized by oxytroph 2 for its growth. Now, the figure that you see on the left hand side was taken as an example. In reality, this information is unknown. It's by looking at the growth pattern of oxytroph on the Petri plate, the scientists figure out the sequence of intermediates in the metabolic pathway. So let's try to understand this. Pay attention to oxytroph 1. Oxytroph 1 is dependent on oxytroph 2 for its growth. This shows that the enzyme mutated in oxytroph 1 is behind the enzyme mutated in oxytroph 2. So the enzyme mutated in oxytroph 1 is behind the enzyme mutated in oxytroph 2. In a similar way, the oxytroph 2 is dependent on oxytroph 3. So the enzyme mutated in oxytroph 2 is behind the enzyme mutated in oxytroph 3. Now each of these oxytrophs are accumulating and secreting the certain metabolite in its external environment. Pay attention to oxytroph 1. It is overproducing metabolite A. The oxytroph 2 
is overproducing metabolite B and the oxytroph 3 is overproducing metabolite C. Now each of these oxytrophs can be grown in flask. Once they are grown, they will accumulate certain metabolites based on the mutation. All these accumulated metabolites which are thrown out from the cells can be purified by chromatography and analyzed by techniques such as mass spectroscopy. Hence, using organic chemistry, you can derive molecular formula for each of the metabolites. Once this is done, you can now have the pathway for the synthesis of metabolite D. And so this is how the metabolic pathway are discovered.